My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesiology resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. On very rare occasion, the ventilator right behind me might malfunction in the middle of a surgery. When that happens, I have to send a stat page for help. Who does that page go to and what exactly do they do to help troubleshoot something so critical as the anesthesia ventilator? In this video, I spend a day with Nilsen Flores, the anesthesia tech on the other end of my stat page, to show you what exactly anesthesia techs do and how they play such a critical role in the anesthesia team. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Let's dive in. I'm Nilsen Flores, anesthesia tech, Malsana. In my job as an anesthesia tech, um, I stock. I clean the machine after the surgery. If anything happens with the machine, I fix it. From my end as an anesthesia resident, when I have an issue with the machine, there's some troubleshooting that I'm able to do, but if there seems like there's an issue with one of the parts or just something that I've never seen before, the first thing that I'm gonna do is get on my computer and I'm gonna page you. And yeah. you show up right away. Yes. How do you learn how to fix an anesthesia machine? This is a complicated piece of equipment. Well, uh, they give us a packet with every machine part, everything that can happen, and then within time you learn, you learn. You're not gonna get it at the first time. It, it, within time you get it. You could go to school also, we have little programs that people go to to become uh, anesthesia tech. When I go back to the equipment room, there are rows and rows of equipment. How do you learn the names of everything and what everything does? Basically before you even start, you have a packet of what are equipment called and what the equipment function is and how can you clean it, what's the drying time, it's everything. On the most pager. common call I'll get is turnover basically. Um, just when the case is over, just to come and wipe the machine, make sure everything is there, stock for the next case. Every surface on the machine needs to be wiped with one wipe. So you, it's, not, it's not like you grab a bunch of wipes and you wipe all over. No, that's how you spread germs. Everywhere you think the doctor touches. This is, you might think the doctor does touches, don't touch it, but he touches it, moves it. You want to adjust it to the patient. Everywhere. You want to wipe everything. This little handles right here. You want to wipe the computer also. Keyboard. The most stressful part of my job is when you can't figure it out, when you can't figure out the problem with the machine. You also have a patient that's undergoing surgery, so you can't figure out the problem. It's very stressful, very stressful. You want to know basically everything about the machine, because when things like that happen, it, it becomes very stressful. What would you say is the most rewarding part of your job? Helping someone. Helping someone when the things, when things are not working in the room, coming in the room, fixing it, and then just seeing the joy of everybody faces like when I fix something. I'll just say on behalf of anesthesiologists, anesthesia residents, it is so important when you know we stat page and you show up 20 seconds later with the equipment that we need if there's a dire situation in the operating room. And one of the reasons that I wanted to make this video, and I'm so glad that, that you were willing to do it, is because I just wanted to show how much of a team effort yes. anesthesia is. Because it's not just the physicians and the nurses, it's also the anesthesia techs. We as anesthesiologists, I think often feel like we're sort of behind the scenes. Patients often don't really remember yes. us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think, I think you guys are right along with us. We're, none of us are necessarily like seen or remembered, uh, maybe like the surgeon would be, but that doesn't mean that what we're doing isn't a really important part of safely taking care of a patient for surgery. Yes. Yes. In general, how many operating rooms are you responsible for? Each tech was responsible to eight to th 13 rooms. Wow. Eight to 13 rooms, yes. And so on any given day when there's surgery going in an operating room, I mean, the, the length of the surgery may vary, but yes. you're looking at anywhere from two to 10 surgeries in an operating room in a day. Yes, yes, two to 10. Two uh, doesn't rarely happen, but we're mostly, this is a big hospital. We do a lot of cases, so we're, we're constantly busy. My name is Ravindra Ranari, uh, go by Ravi. I'm um, the anesthesia technical manager here at Mount Sinai Hospital. We have about 50 actual main OR rooms and about 15 to 20 procedural areas which we cover uh, with 21 techs over uh, three shifts, uh, seven days a week. Hello, my name is Joshua Villar. I'm the senior director of anesthesia here at Mount Sinai. The most challenging part of my job is making sure that we have the right team to support the anesthesiologists and all the residents because we have 100 attendings and over 100 residents, 
NCRNAs, NPAs that we have as our customers, we are in the customer service business and we make sure that they have everything that they need. What are the different shifts that people have in terms of when anesthesia techs are getting to the hospital? So this is a 24 hour service because it's a hospital. So um, we're our first, the first shift is five to two. So you gotta come in, you gotta set up, and then you gotta put away everything, all the equipment, all the items. And then the second shift is two to 10. That's the shift that closes the rooms, does the turnovers, and then we also have our overnight shift. Whatever remaining room that needs to be get done, turned over or cleaned or stocked, they do it basically. And so if you've got a shift that starts at 5 a.m., yes. what time are you getting up? I live pretty close, so I, I got up uh, around four o'clock. You're up earlier than most of the yes. uh, anesthesiologists. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Tell me about a machine checkout. What's the importance of that? Uh, it's very important because the machine checkout, it checks for any leaks. It avoids any problems that the machine has while it was off. So you can see before the problem even begins, basically. So you'll hit full test. It'll get basically self-explanatory. It tells you um, what to basically do. It tells you to switch. You hit the switch. You make sure everything is out. Then you hit the button. So right now it's analyzing the machine, making sure everything is connected and it is going through. It's going well. One of the things that they encourage us to do here is also ha do a machine check ourselves. Yes, which is important. And you know, so I do, and it's extremely rare, but occasionally I'll come across an issue, you know, in between cases when I'm doing a machine check and it'll say that there is a, a circuit leak is yes. probably the most common and that's, yes. that's usually a pretty straightforward fix. Maybe mm -hmm. the bag isn't quite all the way on or one of the um, inspiratory or expiratory limbs isn't connected perfectly. So I just, you know, reconnect that. But I think once I ended up with a problem that I didn't know what I yes. was looking at and I, and I paged a tech, it was you who showed yes. up <laughs> and you fixed the machine, but yes. you, you ended up replacing basically a, a chunk of the machine. I'd yes. never seen anything like that before. Yes, yes, yes. You won't believe, Max, but most of the problems that I experienced is because the doctor didn't do the checkout first. So everybody just being in a rush for the next case, just trying to get out of here. If we just take time and do the little checkout, we'll be good. Right. And yeah. I think that's such an important point. Yes. So, you know, for any anesthesiologist yes. who's watching, <laughs> doing a machine checkout yes. between cases is something that's really easy to skip over because you're in a hurry, you're trying to get the room turned over, get the next surgery started. Yes but it's such a critical aspect of making sure that you can safely take care of the next patient is having done a machine check because the circuits changed out, yes. sometimes the absorbance changed out, and there can be issues that come up with the machine. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, for letting me follow you around today yes, and explaining yes. what you do. <laughs> but most of all, thanks for doing what you do. We couldn't do anesthesia without anesthesia tech, thank so Nelson, it's really nice to talk Appreciate to you. Appreciate it, Max. Thanks. <laughs>